Hey folks, Jason Heath here. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Chicago and I'm headed out to a gig, which is kind of the normal thing for me on beautiful days it seems to be, but oh boy, the snow is gone in Chicago and the trees are starting to bloom and the flowers are starting to come out and even if you're weary on the road like I am right now in my car out in the burbs playing some music, you still can't help but just be having a good time. And you know, I thought I'd just talk a few minutes today about something that some people ask about uh, students or other colleagues, which is when to sub out of gigs. When are you going to, let's say you're playing with the, uh, let's say the whatever, the West Geneva Symphony Orchestra, and that's about 50 bucks a service, and you took this gig, and then you get called for, you know, something that's like about 200 a service. And the West Geneva Orchestra is about 80 miles away. And the gig that's 200 a service is about 5 miles away in the city. Do you bag the West Geneva Symphony? Do you go to the good gig? Hmm. You know, that's a tough one. Uh, and that's a call. No matter what your ethics and morals are with these sort of things, you're going to have to make these calls if you're a freelancer, at least. And you're going to have to make them a lot. Because what happens is these... Uh, let's call them smaller gigs. They are smaller gigs. Let's call them like a, the what, theoretical West Geneva Symphony Orchestra. That sort of gig is probably not a great gig, but it might be the sort of gig that is on that has a lot of loyalty toward you. So by saying no to those sort of gigs, you may end up not being asked by those gigs anymore, which can be okay. It depends on what your situation is. I, for instance, I have. I, 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 there are a lot of orchestras that I used to play with that never call me anymore, and that's okay because I work all the time, and I'm playing with groups that are more like the second example than the first example, which is always a good thing. But um, the, you know, you can wind up shooting yourself in the foot. A lot of people I know they they say no to the smaller groups that never end up calling them again, and they play for the big groups, and then the big groups are maybe just calling them because they need a one-time sub. And maybe they'll call you back, maybe they won't. I know a lot of musicians that sort of end up um, <laughs> gigless because they they didn't strike a very good balance between sort of the, the smaller organizations and the larger organizations. That's, not, that's a tough one. I know several musicians that say, I will not sub out. If I take something, I will not sub out of it. I don't care what it is. I know some people, and I, I, it's, it's admirable. Uh, well, it's, it's, I, I, I don't know. There, there's some people that um, will, will hold on to that West Geneva Symphony and the Chicago Symphony or the St. Louis Symphony or a group like that calls them, and they, they don't sub out, even though. Um, even they, they, they just, they will not sub out. They'll say no. And then I know some musicians who will always sub out no matter what if it pays more. They will, they will never, um, they will never take, they will never say no to a job that pays more than the job they've currently got in their books. And um, that can be a little bit of a dangerous thing too because you can, you know, the mu even in a, the big city like Chicago or New York or LA, uh, the music community is not that big, really. I mean, it's a small world and word, word travels fast. And if you get a reputation as being unreliable, um, you may find yourself in a bad position if you're intending to do this sort of stuff for the long term. So just a couple thoughts and now I'm going to go uh, play a concert and think about being outside. So, all right, take it easy.